In my opinion, and for what it's worth, what I'm about to show you is absolutely ridiculous and, quite frankly, reckless and dangerous, if not to the point of negligence. You see, on this channel, I frequently tell you that consistency is key. Typically, when we're talking about the evidence, you need to present things in the same way in the first instance as you do when you get to court. Hence the police caution, i.e. if you do not mention something when questioned, then it may harm your defence if you rely on it later in court. That's sort of the principle behind the consistency, because otherwise you might have changed your story, it's less likely to be believed, and ultimately it's just less credible. And that's the key point here. If it's not consistent, it's less credible. So let's talk about this situation with cycle lanes, because I've done a number of videos in the past about close passes where drivers are prosecuted routinely for a close pass with a cyclist. Uh, for example, roll this clip. And that I mentioned earlier, barely more than half a meter. Use your judgment to see how close you think this vehicle is about to pass. Given the guideline minimum distance in the highway code that I mentioned earlier on and how far away it would put me from the camera. This far away. If you take a look at the wheels of this vehicle, which gives you an idea how close the vehicle is, the wheels are on the line and, as I said, barely more than half a metre from the kerb, let alone the cyclist. But for me, it's the rear perspective that tells the true picture. If you look at the rear wheel of the bike, is almost on the line, that's to avoid the drains, and look how closely this white van comes to the other side of that white line, touching it as it comes in front of the cycle. Now, as you can see here, the vehicle was owned by a company which failed to respond to the police for a request for the details of the driver, resulting in a fine in court of £1,200 with the prosecution costs of £470. So courtesy of Cycle Gaz, who gave me permission to use that clip beforehand, that was a situation where the police decided they were going to prosecute that driver for a close pass with a cyclist. Now, note that I use this clip in particular because there are lines on the road to indicate that this should be used by cyclists. Not every road has those cycle li uh, lines on the road and some of them you are just meant to give the requisite amount of space when passing a cyclist, which by the way is at least 1.5 meters in areas with speeds of up to 30 miles an hour and more space if the speed is more than that. So how much is 1.5 meters? Good question, glad you asked. You see, many lanes designated as a cycle lane are not particularly generous, some of which only provide you barely more than half a meter. But if I were to back up from the camera by one and a half meters, I would be going at least this far away. Or to put it another way, roughly the width of my sofa here, which is roughly one and a half meters, give or take the fluffy bits on the side. Now this particular situation comes about because there are lines painted on the floor. Remembering the point that I told you consistency is key. But now let me take you to another video which had a slightly different outcome. Watch the clip first and then I'll let you know what happened. So in this particular clip, which was tweeted out by Ed Cycle Home, which I will link in the description as well for credit, the police in this case said that this close pass, because it is a close pass, it's just as close as the previous clip that I showed you, but the police said that the close pass in this clip did not break the law because everybody was in their own lane. Now. Call me cynical, but there is absolutely no difference between these two clips. Aside perhaps that the second clip that I've just showed you has got a red, somewhat faded red uh, painted flooring with a picture of a cycle within the cycle lane. But either way, both lanes are no more than about half a meter wide given that the second clip has a yellow lane uh, marking on the left hand side. But taking the two clips side by side, the size of that lane is virtually the same. And the close pass with each vehicle is therefore virtually the same. So I'm left in a difficult position because I create these videos to help you to understand law. But then what we have is inconsistent approach 
to applying that law in various parts of the country and by various police forces and so on. And only when the law is applied consistently, really, can it be deemed to be fair. Because the whole point of a close pass offence, driving without consideration for other road users, i.e. breaking the highway code rules of 1.5 metres to pass a cyclist, is for everybody's safety. Now, there is no real sense that painting the floor a different colour is magically going to make the cyclist uh, safer with the close pass with the vehicle. The whole, whole point of the distance with the passing vehicle is to allow space in case the cyclist wobbles, um, because let's not forget um, the tragic story not too long ago where a cyclist did wobble and fall in front of a car, and that was from the footpath, um, not just within the road and a narrow cycle lane to the left-hand side. So this tweet uh, suggests that people do not use uh, these painted cycle lanes for their own safety. And quite frankly, I agree with that because if these are not going to be enforced with the distance passing requirement, which it appears that's, that's the case, that certain forces are not applying that, then it would be much safer to use the footpath. But you're not allowed to use the footpath. You must not ride on the footpath. So cyclists, again, are left in a very difficult situation. So there it is, uh, an inconsistency in the way that this law is applied. So um, I can only apologize to all of you uh, about that on behalf of the whole of the legal system. But then again, uh, there are many things about the legal system that I could apologize to you for. Not that any of it's my fault, don't shoot the messenger. I often say, don't shoot the messenger on this channel. I explain to you what the law is. Just like uh, many people don't, well, some, not many, some people don't like the fact that council tax is uh, a legal obligation and it's right there within the, the uh, Local Government Finance Act. Some people still don't believe that, but um, <laughs> that's down to them. Um, so there it is, uh, inconsistency as it's applied. I call it as I see it and that's it. Um, so anyway, leave me your thoughts and comments in the box below. Um, would you be using these lines now knowing that some police forces are not going to enforce the close pass uh, requirements? Uh, for what it's worth, in my view, uh, they should still be uh, allowing that much space because that's what the highway code says, just because it's a separate lane. Um, if it was a satisfactory cycle lane and it was wide enough to allow that amount of space then that'd be fine but this isn't this is just half a meter wide um, and there is also just before i actually tail off the video there is also a, a notion of malfeasance and non-feasance allow me to explain malfeasance is you've done something but you've done it badly non-feasance is when you haven't done something so if you've done something and you've done it badly and therefore it creates risk and danger and it's reckless there might be some liability here. So in actual fact, there may well be liability here on the local authority that's painted these lines if the police force is not enforcing the standard rules of the highway code because the local authority will have had to have recognized that there is a risk of harm if police are not going to enforce those lines properly. And once that's come to awareness, they really need to do something about it because there is a, a duty of care and a responsibility. But uh, as a trivia, um, when we get uh, leaves falling in the autumn and uh, a lot of people think that the local authority are, are supposed to clean them up, they're not. There's no legal requirement for them to clean those up. So there is no case of non-feasance, as in not doing something. But if they do sweep them up and put them into a pile, but then somebody goes into it and it causes an accident, that's malfeasance because they've done something, but they've done it badly. So therefore, there's a liability arising out of that. So legal trivia as uh, to close off the video. But um, as I say, leave me your thoughts and comments in the box below. I, for one, think this is ridiculous. So in the meantime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.